Hi, I'm Tim Tyler and this is a video about optimization. It will mostly be about the significance of optimization. Firstly, what is optimization? Optimization involves problem solving. Particularly, it involves solving problems where you have to find a good solution from a space of possible alternatives. Since practically any problem can be framed in those terms, optimization is a very general concept. A classical example of optimization is where you want to make a cylindrical tin can which encloses the most volume using the smallest quantity of metal. There's a ratio of diameter to length that's most cost effective, which is independent of the size of the can. This is the optimal solution to the problem, and the process of finding it is known as optimization. Optimization problems are common. Whenever you try to get from one place to another as quickly as you can, you're solving an optimization problem. Trying to get proper nutrition while minimizing your calorie intake is an optimization problem. Trying to acquire money without breaking the law is another optimization problem. Optimization techniques were discovered in the 19th century and were considered to be part of mathematics. The field rapidly split into discrete optimization and continuous optimization, which involves calculus. For some problems, the best possible solution available is needed, while in other cases you just want a solution that meets some criteria. Different approaches are often needed for these different cl classes of problem. All optimization problems feature a utility function that says how good solutions are. Some have an additional function that specifies when to stop the search. This can involve time limits, resource limits, or a specification of what solution qualifies as being satisfactory. Some optimization problems are linear, and special techniques were developed for solving those. However, most optimization problems are not linear. Some optimization problems were best described in terms of constraints, and the effects of adding and removing constraints has been studied. Optimization can involve either maximization or minimization. It makes no difference mathematically. The goals of agents can be represented using what are generally known as utility functions. The agents then behave so that they maximize their utility function. This idea has been used extensively in economics, and it's also been used to formalize some ethical systems. As the concept of utility maximization is very general, it provides a framework for modeling and comparing the goals of arbitrary computable agents. Conflicting goals can be modeled using utility functions, and this provides a useful framework for examining conflict. In particular, the idea of Pareto optimality can be applied to conflicts. A solution to a conflict is Pareto optimal if no agent can get more of what they want without some other agent getting less of what they want. There's often a set of such solutions known as the Pareto set. Some optimization problems have a temporal dimension, raising the issue of how long-term gains need to be balanced against short-term ones. The solutions to some of these optimization problems change over time, and optimizing agents sometimes need to track optima whose location changes over time. Such problems require a dynamical system to track them, and then the stability of optima can become a significant factor. Oscillating or orbiting around optima becomes possible, and optima themselves may decline or completely collapse. The addition of a temporal dimension can result in a much harder optimization problem. Though optimization, technique can, though optimization techniques can be applied to specific problems, optimization is a general purpose skill that can be applied to a broad range of problems. Competence at optimization is closely related to intelligence, and the idea that optimization capability is a general purpose skill is related to the empirical observation that high intelligence results in an increased competence across a broad spectrum of tasks among humans. It's often possible to describe properties of an ideal optimizer in a specialized problem domain. For example, for the game of tic-tac-toe, optimal strategies for both sides are known. In this case, if both players play optimally, the result is always a draw. In economics, this idea is known as economic efficiency. Deviations from maximum e efficiency can arise as a result of stupidity or internal conflict. Conflicts can arise as a result of battles with peers or parasites, for example. Stupidity and internal competition are not always easy to distinguish from one another as causes of inefficiency. Internal competition looks a lot like stupidity from the perspective of an external observer. We have a grand unified theory about how optimization techniques work. 
The basic idea is due to Charles Darwin and is widely known as Darwinian evolutionary theory. Optimization involves trial and error. It has the classic form of a Darwinian evolutionary process where variation on existing solutions are generated and then tested, with the more successful solutions being retained and forming the parents of the next generation. It's true that there are some optimization techniques that do not closely resemble this model. For example, random search is an optimization technique, but it has no concept of memory or inheritance. Exhaustive search is another optimization technique that doesn't look very much like Darwinian evolution. It does use memory, but it only has a single simple lineage instead of a tree of variants. However, these techniques are trivial and only useful on tiny problems. Techniques for solving more complex problems tend to look much more like Darwinian evolution. With more complex problems, trying solutions at random, without paying attention to what has already been tried, is not a very attractive option. You're forced to perform local searches, and these more complex cases represent the vast majority of real-world problems, and the process of solving them more closely resembles Darwinian evolution. The Darwinism involved is of a very general kind. It permits the use of interpolation and extrapolation during recombination. In addition to retaining successful variants to show where to search, failed variants can be retained to show where not to search. It's a form of Darwinism which incorporates the principles of intelligent design. It more closely resembles Darwinism plus genetic engineering, or the kind of Darwinism that's involved in cultural evolution. Some think that the term Darwinism is a misnomer, although it's hard to deny that Darwin originally came up with the basic idea. Paradigmatic optimization techniques include genetic and mimetic algorithms which are explicitly modelled on gene-based and meme-based evolution respectively. Optimization techniques are very useful tools for solving problems. However, optimization has also turned out to have some interesting scientific applications. It's possible to model the behaviour of organisms using optimization models in which the organisms behave as though they are maximising the number of their distant descendants. Ecosystems can also be modelled as maximising a function. They behave as though they maximise entropy. Entropy maximisation is a different idea from the second law of thermodynamics. The second law just says entropy tends to increase, and entropy maximisation is a very different idea. It says that if there's a range of possible entropy increases, larger ones are more likely than smaller ones on average. There's more than one reason why entropy is maximised, but the easiest one to understand involves the basic statistical fact that high entropy states are more numerous than low entropy ones, so undirected changes are likely to lead away from low entropy states. The concept of entropy maximisation turns out to have a broad domain of applicability. In addition to organisms and ecosystems, electrical discharges, drainage basins, propagating cracks and stars all behave as though they're maximising entropy. It turns out that maximisation is important in physics and chemistry as well as in biology. Lastly, the concept of optimization is significant at the moment, partly because it's a foundational concept for those interested in building intelligent machines. A synthetic intelligence would be a powerful optimization process. Such entities will probably be the most powerful optimization processes produced by evolution to date, as far as we know. Understanding how to build intelligent machines is essentially the same project as learning how to optimize effectively. It's a challenging project. We know that intelligent humans can fall prey to addictions and religions, and we want to design an optimization process that isn't vulnerable to such things. Although it started out as a relatively small area of mathematics, it's become clear that optimization is a subject of enormous technical and scientific importance, with a correspondingly large social impact. Enjoy.